Welcome to the visual elements of photography. There are a total of 39 different uh, elements of photography that are categorized into about seven different categories. Today, we're gonna to talk about our first category, light. And for the purpose of this presentation, I've made my house as dark as I could possibly get it. Watch this. This way I can talk to you guys about light using the flashlight on my phone. So let's get started. First, we're gonna talk about front lit light. This is when the light comes from the same position as the camera and allows for very few shadows on the subject's face. The light is basically right in front of the subject so that they're staring straight into it. That's how you get these illuminated eyes. To demonstrate with the flashlight on my phone, this is front lit. You can see that my face is completely illuminated. Here are some more examples of front lit photography. Here we have uh, Barack Obama, also front lit. And a good way that you can tell that he's front lit is because of the reflection of the light in his eyes. Here's a less obvious example, but also clearly front lit because we can tell that there are no shadows on the face. If you stare into his pupils, you can see a tiny little reflection of the light that he is facing. Next, we have side lit. The way we can tell that a subject is side lit is if the light is coming from the side, meaning that the shadows are going to be pointing toward the side of the face. So we can see some detail, but a lot of shadows. Here's how you can tell if your subject is side lit. The light is gonna come from either the right side or the left side of the subject. You can see that half of my face is illuminated while the other half of my face is darker. You can also see the shadows that are cast on my face. The shadows reflect every little line, wrinkle, or imperfection that's on my face. Here are some more examples of side lit. Here you can see that on the left side of the subject's face, her skin looks very bright, whereas on the right side, it's darker. If you look at her eyes, you can tell that her eyes are blue from the left side of her face, but the right side, that eye is significantly darker to the point where we almost can't tell what color her eyes are. Here's another very dramatic example of side lit photography. The right side of her face is completely lit up while the left side of her face is completely in shadow. We can't see anything whatsoever. The darker the room you are working in, the more dramatic your side lit photography. Side lit doesn't necessarily have to be on a face. The subject can be anything, even a slinky. All you have to do is watch the shadows. If it's a side lit subject, the shadows will be going off to the side, just like the slinky. Next, we have backlit. Backlit light is gonna be light that's coming from behind the subject and it is facing the camera. While uh, you can get different effects with backlit light, a true backlit photo is still gonna be able to show the, uh, the, the details of the subject. So here you can see that the light is coming from behind, which is why the background is so white. But we can still make out the four subjects a mom and dad and their two kids. We can see the smiles. We can see what kind of clothes they're wearing. We can see their hair. We can even see the laces on the little boy's shoes. For backlit photography, just so you can see where the camera and the light is going to be, it's going to be shining behind the subject, facing the camera. If you're not careful, you might blind the camera. Here are some more examples of backlit photography. Again, this is backlit because we can make out the detail. 
Next, we have a silhouette, which I'm sadly not gonna be able to demonstrate for you guys because I can't replicate those conditions here inside my apartment. But a silhouette is going to be when the light is coming from behind the subject, just like a backlit photography. However, the subject itself is blacked out and we can't see detail. On this example of a dog on the beach, you can make out the beach, we can see the sun setting behind the dog, but we really can't make out much detail on the dog itself. This dog might also be considered a backlit subject because we can see the nose and a little bit of the collar, but it is mostly in shadow, making it a silhouette. Silhouette photos often happen at sunrise or sunset. Here we have another beautiful example of a little boy and girl with the sun setting behind them. Again, the sun is setting, but facing the camera, which is why it creates this shadow effect on the subjects. We can't make out any detail. Can't tell what color his hat is. Can't tell what color her hair is. We can't see if there's a pattern on her dress or his shirt. All we can see are the shadows. So we know that he's wearing a hat and that he is holding flowers. We know that her hair is in a ponytail and that she's wearing a dress. Other than that, we have no other information because it is completely in shadow. Here's another example of a silhouette photography, again, during a sunset. So all silhouette photography is technically backlit, but not all backlit photography is a silhouette. If you can see the details of the subject, they are just backlit. If you cannot see the details and they are completely in shadow, it is a silhouette. Here we have a, a silhouette photo that is not taking place at sunset. In this case, the photographer lit the background. There's probably studio lights in the background facing the subject from different angles. However, we can still not make out any detail on the subject's faces. You can see a little bit of his collar, a little bit of the detail of the hair, a little bit of the baby's onesie and eyelid. But that's it. So this is still considered silhouette photography because the subject is primarily in shadow. Next, we have direct light. Direct light can come from any direction and it is defined by its hard edged and dark shadows. The best example of direct light and the most common one is when you are outside on a perfectly sunny day. That's when you get the strongest shadows and it's gotta be around noon when the sun is up in the air. You can see from this photo that there are no clouds in the sky and that is clearly a beautiful day. Here's some more examples. We can tell that this is in direct light because of the hard shadows of the horses. And even though we can make out some clouds in the background, there aren't enough clouds to be obstructing the sun. This is direct light while indoors, but you'll notice that this tomato is right there in the, the sunshine coming through the window. It's not in a shaded part of the room. So it is still, even though it is inside, it is still receiving that direct light. This tomato also happens to be side lit because the shadow is going to the side. You can have different types of light happening at the same time. Something can be in direct light and still be front lit, back lit, or side lit. Next, we have directional diffused light. This is light that can come from any direction and it is distinct but soft shadows. We might get directional diffused light early in the morning when the sun is coming up and the world is lit, but not lit well. We can still see shadows, but they're fuzzy. So here you can see the shadows around the child's face and on her neck, but nothing is truly defined. We can also see darker points in her hair. You could also get this effect if you uh, take photos in the evening right before the sun starts setting. You also might get this effect 
if you have partly cloudy skies with clouds slightly obstructing the sun, or if the sun is poking through clouds. This can be a very difficult photo to try to catch. Your best bet is to take the photo early in the morning. Here are some more examples. You can see that not very many shadows are visible here, but we can still make out darker points. When you look at the shadows that are being cast on her face around her eyes, they have soft edges and they are not dark shadows. They're very, very subtle. Next, we have diffused or revealing light. This is really popular for photographers because it creates no to almost no sh shadows whatsoever. Diffused or revealing light is best accomplished on a cloudy day during daytime. Because the clouds are obstructing the sun so thickly, when you walk outside, you'll notice that there are no shadows. This makes for some very clear photography. We're able to see the face without any shadows or barely any shadows whatsoever. So you want direct sunlight for strong shadows, diffused for less shadows. I'm sorry, directional diffused for minimal shadows and diffused or revealing light for no shadows. Last, we have glowing light. This is when the light is the subject itself. So here you have the glow. You have two glows in this photo. Take a moment and see if you can identify both of them. The first one is obvious. It's the lighthouse. The camera is pointed at the lighthouse and is focused on that light. Because of the camera's focus on the light of the lighthouse, we see a glow effect throughout the sky and you get a starburst. The second glow that's happening in this photo is the moon in the top left corner. If you focus on the moon, you'll see that there's a halo around it. The camera has captured the light coming off of the moon and it shows it in a glowing fashion. The lights inside the lighthouse on the house and the building of the lighthouse itself are not considered glowing because we can see them completely clearly. Here's another example of glowing. Here, the focus is both on the texture and the glowing light. We'll talk about texture later. On the photo on the left-hand side, we see a diagonal line coming down the photograph that is made by the glowing light coming around the corner. In the picture on the left, we see the glowing light coming from a shape being formed by rocks. The glowing light is right in the center where we see that bright yellow burst. This is gonna be a much more subtle use of glowing light, whereas this is very loud. In this glowing light, the person in the photo is spinning a, uh, a 4th of July firework. It's just probably a sparkler. They're spinning it in a circle. And I say the person in the photo because that person is not the subject. The circle that they've made with the sparkler is the subject. Because this was taken over a short period of time, but long enough for the camera to record all the movement, we can see the sparkler's effect of all of the sparks coming off and flying throughout the air and landing on the ground. So we actually get two glows again. The first glow is the circle in the air. The second is right under where the person is standing where we see a horizontal line on the ground. That's all of the sparklers landing on the ground and showing their light. And those are all the different types of light that we are going to cover for today. In your slide deck, you're going to attempt to take your own photos for each different type of light. For any that you cannot replicate, you are going to 
Google those images and provide a source link in your presentation. If you do not provide a source link, this is considered plagiarism. And a great way to get glow is to make the light the subject. If you have a phone with a, flash, with a flashlight or a flashlight itself, you'll be able to replicate the glow effect. Please make sure that if you are going to use any other type of lighting material that you are careful.